It's almost like you're really out of your house. I, um, uh, yeah, no. I, uh, not? I can't really. be the only person who uh, is getting excited by all this bird talk. Um, look, um, <laughs> you know, there are a few, uh, there's certain animals in the world that I'm amazed they can procreate. Um, just because kissing is out of the question. I, I'm always amazed there are more birds. Um, I mean, I've even seen, like, even fish can do this kind of business, you know what I mean? And it's kind of adorable or whatever. But a bird even tries and the other one loses an eyeball. It's a very strange <laughs> species. I mean, how do you... How do you procreate just by sidling up next to someone and rubbing feathers? It's so Christian summer camp. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're not allowed to do this. Uh, uh. Um, <laughs> you know what? Um, uh, great work, uh, Noah. Give everybody a round of applause. Give Noah a big Yay, round of applause. Noah. You know, um, I've always, you know, you know I don't prepare for these shows, so let's just talk. But I, um, I've always been... <laughs> <laughs> inspired by dive bombing birds in parks. I, you know, I, I've always felt like, you know, some people listen to a Schwarzenegger uh, commencement address with piano behind it, and that's what lifts their spirits, you know what I mean? Let me tell you one thing. Every morning you got to wake up, and then they got piano going in the back. Clang, clang, clang. You got to work harder than everyone else. You got to bring it to the muscles, don't you? Got to control them. You know, I get you're excited about that. That's not inspiring. That dude is six foot seven hundred, and he weighs nine thousand pounds, and he's made of you know Chinese steel. I think actually, if they look, I, I haven't seen him in a long time. I know his liver is. I know his liver is an aftermarket part, but um, I will. But I, you know, one of the, the most inspiring things in the world I've ever seen is a little bird deciding it's had enough of you in its park. <laughs> you ever <laughs> just joggers or whatever? Just... <laughs> I'm like, you have no chance. You're this big. Your your bones have been designed by millennia of evolution to keep you aloft. You are the most breakable animal on the planet. <laughs> and yet you look at a human descendant of primates, <laughs> like plant eating monsters that smash things with their knuckles who have <laughs> risen up and created nuclear <laughs> weapons. And you're like, I got this, I got this. <laughs> Get out of my park. Um, <laughs> That's, I mean, I think during, during quarantine, that's the dream we all need. You know what I mean? That's, that's what we all need to look to for, for guidance and for inspiration. We are that little bird <laughs> putting one weird shaped foot in front of another uh, and going, eventually a Chinese person will think I'm a delicacy. You know, I have always amazed. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Have you never eaten it? I've eaten chicken feet. I've eaten duck feet. Uh, what other feet do they? Uh, I I never went for the pork feet or whatever because they look like they're still in use. Yeah, grandma's uh, <laughs> favorite food. Yeah, chicken frogs like to eat it because it's because for the same reason Noah, Noah doesn't eat skittles anymore. It's because they got gelatin in them, and that's where it comes from. Uh, but I ate frogs like <clears> once. <throat> No, too much information. This is not a. <laughs> this is a rhetorical show. Um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a unique experience oh because every heckler is the same volume. <laughs> doesn't happen That's elsewhere. True. You know, in normal clubs, the people in the front row, if they decide to do it, I hear all of it, and the rest of the club just hears. <laughs> you know, or there's somebody in the back. And the whole audience hears them, but I hear <laughs> way. It's, yeah, it's the battle of Charlie Brown's teacher. Um, I'm the only person um, who used to, with their friends in elementary school, used to make up uh, offensive things that Charlie Brown's teacher was saying. <laughs> My mom says that's inappropriate. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't, I'm not going to swallow a pill just because you gave it to me. <laughs> I'm not sniffing a rag. See what I mean? It's so easy. <laughs> Uh, how, I, I hope you're all doing. I hope <laughs> so wrong and yet so right at the same time. Um, I, the nice thing is, is we all have COVID to excuse our being completely insane. Does anybody else feel completely relieved at losing their mind in the current situation? Because you know what I mean. Like, Everybody has their own personal stuff they go through, but they can't share it with, with the rest of the world because they play a, a part in, in the assholery that's going on. You know what I mean? Like you're arguing with your partner, you're having issues with your kids, you, you, know, you have a problem with your job. You play a part in each of those. You might be the jerk. If you tell the story, you're like, yeah, she was saying this. And I was like, what's your deal? And she's like, I don't know what you want. And I'm like, ah, we were having so much fun until you came along. You know, and that conversation, you relay that to your friend and you're like, you know, me and the ball and chain are having an issue. And they hear it and they go, you, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's you, seriously. I think actually, you know, I've heard the whole thing. I mean, she called me too. She what? You know, so there's all, <laughs> or with your kids, I think when, you, when people have problems with parenting their kids, there's only two types of people who, who bring up parenting issues. Um, those who don't realize they're a terrible parent and those who are currently engaged in being a, a terrible parent in a shopping center or a grocery <laughs> store, he's not usually like this. <laughs> he just, I gave him something to make it slow down and it's just, he won't get up, you know. So <laughs> each of those things. <laughs> and then of course work, you know, if there's a work issue, you know, you know, if you're, if it, you know, you're dealing with your boss or whatever, there's a chance your friend who you're relating this to goes, dude, I know you, you're lazy. I wouldn't hire you. This is dumb. <laughs> and so in those situations, we all kind of in a thorough like way, I think it was he who said, uh, um, all men live lives of quiet desperation. I just do it at a house by the lake behind a bay window. I think was, that's not a direct quote, but basically, if you, you don't need to read Walden Pond now, you're welcome. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you should watch On Golden Pond, though. But I recommend wearing, uh, watching it uh, in Fast Forward because um, it's so much funnier with chipmunk voices and the ending isn't nearly as sad. But in all these situations, by the way, I would be talking in my room like this even if you weren't here. Um, in all of these situations, you play a part in it. You're like, this, is my, this might be my fault. I don't know how comfortable I am bringing this shit up in front of my friends. But the great thing about COVID-19 is we're all screwed. It's the same problem forever. You can be losing your mind and you don't even have to communicate it. We're like, we're all part of the same, we're all in COVID tribe now. This is the greatest bonding exercise that humanity has ever been through <laughs> because we're all like, you don't even have to talk. You just turn to someone in, in, in the shopping line and they don't even have to see your eyes. Like, this is my mask. I'm not trying to show off, but it's awesome. People. Uh -huh. People don't even need to see your mouth move. You don't have to smile or anything. You can just go. <laughs> and they know, they know exactly what you're going through. It's amazing. <laughs> like, you know, in, in every other situation in life, if you were covering half your face and you're like, hmm, they'd go, what's that? I think he's, is that a ninja? You know, but in a, in a supermarket, you're like, that guy knows exactly how I feel. So I, I welcome you to our current insanity, and I thank you all for being here with me. Um, it's, uh, it's been, I think, the, the hardest part for me, um, besides not touching strangers, that came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was, hold on. Um, <laughs> how do I, how do I make this sound uh, less creepy? After a mild introduction that doesn't work either um, that's, that's a uh, the, har the hardest part for this is not interacting with other human beings so sweet, my tech but also just like looping your own thoughts in your head 
Noah was talking about how, like, you know, thinking is the rough part. And I, I've spent a good deal of time staring out windows. That's not good. It, I mean, you feel like Anne Frank waiting for the Nazis to come by. You're like, they're there, get in the roof, you know. Um, just me? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, the weirdest part, you know, it, I mean, you sit there and you think you, you have these, what you think are no. profound thoughts. You know, you have this illusion that you're, you're like, wow, I've really figured this out. You know what? Slurpees are actually drank through a straw. They should be called suckies. You know, and you think <laughs> that's a profound thought. Um, <laughs> I apologize, by the way, too, on the show tonight. If I'm walking funny, I cut myself shaving. There's a certain amount of depilatory that's necessary, even in quarantine. Um, it's been weird, though. I've been in contact with uh, friends. I have a – my <laughs> uncle is sick right now. This is true. Um, uh, I will say, um, in all fairness, he's been sick forever. So I don't know that – it's a new thing. It's like he got a head start. It's like we're all getting into Bosch and he's already watched the series. That's basically what it is. And um, he, he, he's one of the, he was a former FBI. And so basically he just sits in the basement and drinks waiting for someone with a shotgun to ring his doorbell and that was mad after they just got out of jail. And that's <laughs> been his life for a very long time. And so it, you know, it, it catches up with you. And I feel like he's the most fearless person I know in terms of COVID or whatever, because it, it can't get him. Like, I feel like his, it, they always talk about like, it can affect your organs and there's organ failure issues. And all of his organs are like, what can you do to me? I'm a, there's nothing you can, I've had it all. Like his kidneys, they must look like they dwell in an alley on Craigslist smoking like you, like somebody else's cigarettes, you know? And he, but I, my worry about him, you know, is that they he, they put him in the hospital. He's on antibiotics, and I had just talked him into <laughs> taking probiotics, and I'm afraid he's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 there's no science to that. It's just a worry that I have. A worry. That it's sort of like pop rocks and soda. If you take antibiotics and probiotics. Will you explode? I, it's a question that only science can answer. It's like, can you debrief someone who's wearing boxers? It's one of those thoughts that just stays with you. Um, or, you know, is it facial tissue if you're imagining it somewhere else? That part of it, um, <laughs> that was a good one. I got, that was someone, someone literally, that was an emphysema cough. That was impressive. <laughs> You know what I miss, though, in all this? I have to say, road rage. Uh, um, uh, that's not a sentence very often. Um, yes. We had uh, birthday parties have become a hard thing for everybody. We've all had, you know, issues like how do you celebrate people? All You know, my, my girlfriend's kid just graduated high school, and they didn't have a graduation and all this stuff. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm big on presents and parties and all that kind of stuff, and like you can't send somebody like it's awkward you know like i gotta send you a package two weeks before the thing so you can sit it on your front porch and you know and let it be antiseptically you know bathed in sunlight for a week or whatever <laughs> so much for ice cream you know um never mail an ice cream cake during covid i think is a lesson we've learned not necessarily because they won't eat it but because of the stains on the porch but um <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um, I did send my friend a gag gift. Um, it was a ball. Uh, oh. I'm oh. kidding. It was a partially chewed okay. chunk of food. Um, so. The <laughs> if you if you have a hard time catching up to these jokes, keep it to yourself because you're on camera. It's very different. In, in an audience and i think we've actually lost some people in the no they just fell over okay good that's a uh, <laughs> this is a good time for me to get something off my chest that i've been feeling for a long time and uh since there are no canadians present i feel like i can do this um canadians? there aren't any canadians are there me, and, I, me, and, me. 
And if Jody you, and Elle? You live in the United States, though? No. Oh, you're in Canada. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, then it, you can vouch for what I'm about to say <laughs> and, and apologize to all of us. Can, Canadians, <laughs> bless their hearts, some of the nicest people um, you'll ever not get a chance to meet anymore. And, <laughs> and um, I, I had the joy of living in Canada for a very long time. They're very open people, uh, except when they're not. And they're, you know, there's a, um, it's, it's basically a country, you know, a third the size of Russia or twice the United States with an eighth of the people. <laughs> it's like a giant Montana filled with, More uh, like a uh, filled with people from Fargo. Oh, nice. Oh, thanks, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah, good. Hey, you <laughs> don't mind the Canadians, Canadians will open the door for you and say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. So actually, that's not true. They say sorry, which is <laughs> odd enough in its own. But my my, I've been dragging this around for a long time, and I finally like it's been some. Maybe I'm just maybe it's because <coughs> of quarantine, and I'm just gelling on this too much. But Canadians call string cheese cheese string. Mm. What yeah. the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> it's cheese and it's in a string. String. No, no. It's string cheese. Like cheddar cheese, American cheese. Cheese being the functional active noun, and the adverb happens before it, that is a descriptive of the cheese. It is not string. Made up. Nobody is sewing anything. <laughs> no one in Canada is wearing a cheese blouse. This is the dumbest, most disgusting. And what makes it horrible, what makes it frightening to me, is that we've all eaten pudding, right? Everybody's had pudding. Yes. Right? You've had pudding yeah. in your yes. life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know how you leave it in the fridge if you haven't finished it? And it creates that film over the top of it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And no. you know, it's pudding, pudding skin. We call it pudding skin. Yes. Because it's not real okay, skin. The descriptive is pudding, right? It's from pudding. You know, it's pudding skin. There's a huge difference between pudding skin. Don't say it. And skin pudding. Can you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Order of the words <laughs> matters. You yes. scattered people. Uh, I'm not eating skin pudding, you psychopath. <laughs> and I'm not eating cheese string. This is, I'm not, this is the worst scene in the opening of Cliffhanger you could imagine. <laughs> it's not gonna hold. Of course it's not gonna hold. It's dairy. Ah, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, but I don't want to leave you with that. Well, I, you know, I don't want to. Don't want to eat blood pudding. Oh, simmer down, Canada. So, um, <laughs> so I, I don't want to leave you. You know, I don't want to just think. I'm just criticizing. Oh, Murphy, quit it. My cat's outside. That's the other thing too. I have to say, doing these virtual shows has done has murdered my rider as an artist. <laughs> Uh, you don't know what a writer is. Yeah. A writer is why yeah. Van Halen didn't want any brown M&Ms, brown M&Ms, mainly because Eddie had pet gerbils, guinea pigs, I think. And you don't want to mix. That's a mistake. <laughs> you make twice. Um, but, uh, you know, like, I think Pink has one that she needs to have, like, a trapeze in her dressing room. And, and um, U2 has one, like, they have to have new sunglasses. Uh, every hour on the hour leading up to a show. Yes. Um, and they need to be able to watch a documentary on uh, the military industrial complex while <laughs> tuning. Um, so, you know, the rider stuff. And um, mine's, mine's pretty simple. When I'm at Flappers Live, this is a true story and I hope I'm not telling too much. Um, um, they always bring me a giant bottle of kombucha. I don't ask for a giant bottle of kombucha. It just shows up. Um, I have kombucha in my rider as a potential beverage because I don't drink, so they want to be nice. They can throw in one of these things, and what they bring in is a barrel of mushroom tea about that big um, to drink, and I enjoy it, and it's lovely. Don't stop doing it, flappers. I'm now looking forward to it after the 
the current unpleasantness goes away. But you can't really beat my current rider right now. I would like uh, to do the show <coughs> from my house in my office with my own bathroom right there, which I can remove my mic or not when I use it. It's up to me. <laughs> Honestly, what are you going to do? And <laughs> my own fridge full of food and my pets nearby in case I'm anxious. So <laughs> there's no comedy club in the world that can provide you with a cat to pet like you're some kind of, you know, super villain. Just <laughs> Not ready. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is this is really messed with that uh, insofar. But I will say that I've <laughs> I've put on some COVID pounds, as you can tell. Join <laughs> the club. Um, yeah, I'm kidding. I look fantastic. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm on COVID, I'm, I'm on COVID diet, which is only go to the grocery uh, two two times a month and uh, don't touch anything. It's amazing. <laughs> the pounds just fall off. Um, <laughs> leave all the groceries on the stoop for an hour and a half. Don't eat anything that's been in the sun for three hours. Everything's rotten. Starving brains. That's what I'm doing. Um, I've also become a, a master of frontier medicine. I don't know if you have too, but the fear of catching something worse than what I've got at the <laughs> doctor's office you know like I'm, i've got a sure i have a femoral cut and i'm spurting blood all over the floor i don't want to catch covid i'll handle it myself ma hand me a needle and thread <laughs> three tourniquets on right now and um i've never felt better <laughs> This is, you know, I'm always amazed. I have to say, every time there's some sort of end of the world thing, like when 2012 was coming on, and that's just like, compared to now, that's just like comedy. Like 2012 ain't got shit on 2020. <laughs> like, yes. Like, what were the Mayans thinking? <laughs> you guys are adorable. <laughs> Your little calendar that didn't get an update. Um, <laughs> literally. 2012 is the entire civilization of a section of South America having a calendar full of firemen getting to the 12th one and going, well, I guess that's it. I, uh, we're out of firemen. The world's over. That's it. <laughs> never, never ask a society that has disappeared when the world is going to end. It might be a localized phenomenon is all I'm saying. <laughs> When it comes up, I grew up, I don't know if many of you know this, some of you may, I grew up in Peaks Mill, Kentucky. But I also went to Friendship, Indiana twice a year for ceremony for uh, rendezvous where people would shoot muskets and live in teepees and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm not kidding, this isn't the joke part, this is the setup. <laughs> now you know why I don't talk about my life. Um, so, so I, I and I have a, I've had a, my own flintlock since I was nine years old. I have a Herschel House flintlock that's engraved with my name on it, like handmade, all that stuff. And I know, I've known how to load and fire a musket since I was, you know, eight years old. And I, you know, I know how to make burgoo, which if you don't know what burgoo is, it's like frontier stew from whatever's laying around. <laughs> That's basically what it is. So I've always felt relatively good about my ability to live in sort of a book of Eli future. You know what I mean? Um, like as long as I get a, this is my rule. I need a Camaro that runs on sunlight and a, and mounted machine guns. I'm good. You know what I mean? I can I can get the camping supplies. Um, so I've been, you know, every time this comes around, I find myself like, I'm not worried about this. I'm not really, but I am going to YouTube how to survive. Um, and so I watch a bunch of like preppers and people to see what their plan is because I would like to, I think you can learn from a group of people without becoming that group of people. It's kind of a, it's a crucial part of the equation. Like, I would like to know how long beans keep, but I would also like to know um, how not to wear a tank top that doesn't fit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can, 
I can take <laughs> the, take the good and leave some things behind, right? Um, um, like uh, I didn't know that a bunker needs a fart vent, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's got to be some sort of built <laughs> etiquette. It's got to be about hip height, one would think. You just walk up to it. If somebody's yeah. standing next to the vent, you know that they're doing something good for the tribe. And that, <laughs> the problem is, it's yeah. like a it's like a, a fireplace vent. You got to open and shut it in case it's a bioweapon or gas attack or zombies or whatever. Because, you know, what if the hand crawls down? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you become a flesh eater. Uh, am I the only person thinking this through? Um, I love how ex when I get exasperated, I basically turn into John Malkovich. Are you all morons? I don't know how. I do. <laughs> I'm just, it's like be I'm, I'm just being John Malkovich on my lawn. What? are you honking for it's not even her birthday you moron so <laughs> But I don't I, I want to feel like I can give you guys a gift that when we go back to semi normal, um, and I, I expect no normalcy from people for at least a decade, we're all going to be carrying this guy. Think about this in my no lifetime, normal? we've had. Um, AIDS, 9-11, the 2008 crash, and COVID-19. Like, honestly, and, and that's not all the little, like, LA riots, which I was there for, but you might have missed, you know, that kind of stuff, like, all throughout. That's enough. I'm done. You know what I mean? How about, how about, how about, yeah. I'm just going to float this idea. <laughs> how about, from this point on, we not have any of that shit and we just explore space. Is that possible? Can we move into that whole, like, the worst thing that could happen to us is asteroids while we're flying to another planet and finding out, oh my God, this whole place is made of diamonds. Um, so, <laughs> but when you go back out into the world, I want to give you a magic word that can help you in almost any awkward social situation, any situation you find yourself in, this word, this word is, I mean, it is priceless. Um, you ever walk out of a, uh, an elevator and uh, at a hotel, for example, windows here, hallway goes that way, your room is this way, but every time you get out of the elevator, you turn right and head for the glass. You ever, or or you walk out of a building and you turn left and your car is the other way. And you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. And, and there's really no, and there's people close by. So you can't, if you turn around, you might even bump into them. It's just weird. And so you end up walking six blocks the wrong direction or staring out a window. Just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they go to their room and then you're like okay i'm done looking out the window <laughs> and then you're like, there is a magic word that will get you out of all these socially awkward situations it is gorgeous it's gotten a bad rap in some zones but if you use it properly it's a lifesaver and that word is actually Oh, not actually, actually. That actually is such a, because you step out of that building, you're supposed to go right, you go left, there's people right behind you, and instead of just turning around and bumping into them and then <coughs> knowing that you went the wrong way because you're a dumbass and you can't remember where you are <laughs> because the most way. emotional, you turn left and you go, actually, <laughs> they think, not only are you not lost, but you had a better idea. <laughs> they go home going, that person is smarter than I am. Not only, they were going one direction, and now they had a better idea and went another. It will work everywhere. You will find yourself saying it quietly to yourself <laughs> in a hallway with no one around, actually. Um, <laughs> you can use it 
in a dangerous <laughs> situation. <laughs> you're about to reach into you're on a you're in a farm with a bunch of other people, and uh, they're like, "But you can't jerk that snake," and you're like, "Bet I can!" <laughs> like, "Bet you can't." Get in there, grab it, tail, pull it out, and you're like, you're leaning in, about to get it. And you go, actually, <laughs> then start walking back to the house. <laughs> they will assume you are going to get some sort of snake jerking implement, or you have a technique that they have heretofore not been aware of in their snake jerking life. <laughs> and by the time they realize you're not coming back, you've driven away. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to have that word tattooed on my chest backwards so I can see it in a mirror. <laughs> um, I'm going to have it like the Illuminati thing where you can read it forwards and backwards. <laughs> the middle of the tattoo, I want the tattoo artist to go, actually, and... <laughs> uh, so I have a question. I, I have a question for everybody. And this is, uh, only some of you can answer it. When this all started and everybody was like, we're gonna lock down, we gotta lock down, we gotta lock down, we gotta stay home. Everybody's gotta stay home, you gotta stay home. You can't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. Don't see anyone, don't touch anything. Don't breathe, <laughs> don't go outside. Wear a mask in, in, indoors. Stay in your bathroom, on the toilet, flushing constantly and <laughs> splashing water on your face. The only way to survive. We don't know a lot about this disease, but the one thing we do know Stay on the toilet, flushing constantly, splash water on your face, wear a mask, um, blindfold yourself, and wear rubber gloves. Now, I didn't need to be told that because I think, you know, and, uh, only time I don't wear rubber gloves is when I'm on stage or performing. Um, <laughs> uh, just because I don't trust myself. And um, <laughs> it's leftover scars from the 90s. Um, uh, to, to quote many people, I don't know where I've been. So, um, <laughs> Uh, the, the, <laughs> is there a project that is staring you in the face? Yes. Now, full disclosure, mm -hmm. full disclosure. Oh, yeah. I, I, true story, am learning the piano. Bravo. And I am, pra I am practicing, <laughs> la di da, I am practicing <laughs> nearly every day. I'm, I'm at six days a week right now. And I can, I can, I've always, uh, like, I've been, you know, playing by ear my life, my whole life. It, it, when you say play piano, if you do this, people think you're better than you are. Because they suddenly they, they think you're a honky-tonk player all of a sudden. Um, or you play a kal uh, kaleidoscope or whatever that is. Um, what's it? Clydesdale? I don't remember. Anyways, the point is, they think you're in a saloon in the 1800s. So I'm learning to play piano. And I'm also taking like study courses online. So I have an hour of school a day and an hour of piano um, that I'm doing basically every single day. And I've been very proud of myself. And it's all, and I, you know what, I could say it's because I'm a very motivated person and I've always wanted to do this. And this is a unique time and circumstance where I'm really just here. And, the, and I could say that that's the reason, but the real reason is I don't want to clean the garage. <laughs> That's it. I, I can't thank you enough, garage, for inspiring me to do anything but you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, garage, for being full of boxes. That I have no idea that I need until I open it. And one box takes me a year. I'm like, that's where that is. And, um, <laughs> and knowing that each, it's not that the boxes are full of shit I don't need. I'm aware that I need everything in every box. And I'm afraid to open them because I'll, that's a whole year. That's like, there's where they are. I was supposed to, there's my journals. Here's all, my, oh my God. I've been this, I was midway through this project when it got boxed up and now I have to finish. Like, I fear. <clears throat> The two months of activity in every single box in my garage. garage. And thank God, because it's such a mess, I'm now learning to play piano. It is, it's like, I couldn't, have, I mean, it couldn't be better if I had a nun with a ruler living in my garage, just slapping me every time I don't do something else. Is there anybody who hasn't, is there, what's, is, has anybody thought they're going to clean out their closet? 
No. Anybody done that? Anybody thought yeah, that's that? easy. It's air conditioning. That's what I'm working on right you now. Just, you just stare yeah. at it, and you don't do laundry, and you throw it back in there. Yeah. And you're, like, <laughs> you're like, why do I, you know, and every outfit is, I don't know why I have this, but I might wear it. Click, and it just, you ever pick something up and just move it down the rung? Just like this, I reorganized it. I put that one back five shirts. <laughs> now, this is too much. Um, I've been looking through my stuff, and I, and I had this moment of realization about how many shoes I have. Now, I have... This oh time, I have I have two pairs of shoes that I wear regularly. Um, one is uh, the the high top tennis shoes I wear to the gym, and the other are a pair of uh, five one one combat boots that I wear everywhere else. And the reason I wear them everywhere else is because of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> if trouble goes down. I'm not gonna be in flip flops or loafers. <laughs> Slip on, which should be called slip offs. That's why you wear them. Boy, I'm done wearing yes. shoes. Oh, oh. I wear, I wear full fledged lace up zipper on the side. Though I'm a man of men. Oh. I, got bit, I got things to do. It's too easy. No, it's not because they're oh, just is. sealed in. They go halfway up my calf, and they're, and they're just they're just real stompers. All right, who's Who's okay. flushing? Somebody flushed. <laughs> no, no, I'm getting water. I'm getting water. Mute getting your water mic if you're gonna, I mean, if you're gonna irrigate your canal, <laughs> honest to God. <laughs> so care. wrong on so many fronts. Um, I, uh, so I wear those. It was those my kitchen all sink. Oh, I don't care. We moved on. <laughs> <laughs> these shows that's the only downside is these shows are just too damn familiar <laughs> the part is, though, i get to look at your house before i <laughs> perform for you so i if if you don't like my comedy i can at least go well who gives a shit well, look at that couch <laughs> <laughs> you don't like my jokes well apparently <laughs> You don't like hanging pictures either. Um, so, <laughs> no offense, Noah. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> so I have. Uh, he's probably in the other room. He was probably the one flushing. So. Um, <laughs> Michael, he was gone for a while. Baby. All right. Um, so, I I realized I was like going through all these different things I have because I have like I dress my outfit some of you have seen me, seen me walking around is always the same i love i'm a i'm a big fan of like the illusion of einstein i won't say it. and like i i like the illusion of einstein and elon musk not the reality the, tr the truth is they're both dicks and not very scientific but the part they sell to the public i'm big i'm a big fan of and so i wear an outfit that i call the gray man which is um, it's a spy really term for somebody who can just like disappear into a crowd. Do you want to get it for me? At, don't talk See during. You. Don't, you, if you're going to order food, <laughs> mute your mic. I mean, honestly, you're making us all hungry. And unless you're going to find a way to deliver it to all of us and we let it sit outside for two weeks and melt on the stove, <laughs> <I'm not it. laughs> well, this My outfit is called the Gray Man. And I, uh, I dress like this all the time because I don't have to think about it. And if I had to stay in it forever because the world ended, I wouldn't go, great. I'm stuck in Armageddon uh, wearing a Kiss Me, I'm Irish shirt. This is just not bad. <laughs> so I have combat boots and this, and that's what I wear out, and that's my thing. And so, um, but I realize I have all these other clothes for other stuff that I've either accumulated over time or that I wear for other parts of my life. Because like when I perform on stage with my band, I'm a different human being. I just am. I'm not me. I'm not, I'm, I'm Amy. I'm not Amy. I don't have a character named Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Amy was Amy. Uh, I'm Amy. Welcome. Okay. Uh, we're the Amy. Right Amy. <laughs> Amy. What you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, so, um, no. I'm a version of myself, but not the normal version of myself. It's an honest portrayal of an aspect of myself, but it's a limited version. <laughs> 
it's a it's a particularly spicy slice of the quiche, as it were. And so I have different outfits for that. So they stay in a separate thing. They've got their own locker. It's like a coffin. But my regular interaction clothes, I realized that I had for the longest time, I my clothes in high school could uh, only be summed up as the Marty McFly. <laughs> I um I did not have mom jeans, but I did. It was jeans, a t-shirt, and an overshirt, sleeves rolled up, right, unbuttoned. A shacket situation, as it were. <laughs> and I and I realized that if you leave it unbuttoned, that's reasonable. That's just like I might be a little chilly, but I don't want to wear a coat. This is a mid-zone use of this, right? That's the whole thought process. Whether you say it out loud or not, that's <laughs> no, what's going wrong. on. <laughs> but I realized that guys who button up their shirts but also <laughs> roll up the sleeves apparently are trying to give the illusion to the rest of us that they just, we just all interrupted them in the middle of fixing an engine. Yes. Um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I was just making this better. <laughs> um, I'm a businessman, but I was in the process of still being functionally useful as a man. Um, can you hand me that socket wrench? It's the wrench with the sock on the end. Um, I, think, I, don't know. I haven't read the manual. <laughs> Funny. Um, my old, my problem was the two button. You ever get snagged by the two button sleeve? So you unbutton yeah. the first one, you start to roll it up, and there's a second button. You're like, why can't my I can't feel my hands anymore? I can't. <laughs> like ah, the second button. And then you undo it, and you're like, this is just button. now I'm. A, now I'm a French pop. Like the whole thing is all just a billowy, blousy floppiness. You're like, I can't roll this up. It'll go all the way up to my arms. I don't know what's happening. I look like Johnny Depp. I'm like, no. but I have a bunch of these shirts like waiting for me to return to the Marty McFly, right? They're sitting there. One day we shall go back to that or whatever. Now, granted, at 50, almost one years old. In September, I'll be 51. And um, yeah, be amazed. Like I could feel, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's incredible. I, um, I stay in shape uh, at 51 for one reason and one reason only. To irritate my friends who are out of shape. Yes. <laughs> They're all yeah, the same age as me. And I just want them to the there was a I, I can't remember when i first heard it but there was like a comic who was like once you hit 40 man you're back and your thing and you're burr, burr, burr. and that was his whole act right <laughs> and i hit 40 and i was like no nah, i'm fine i'm all right I'm okay and then he's like you wait till you hit 50 and then by the time he's 50 he's like jesus christ <laughs> i hurt myself getting out of bed you know, and I'm like, now I'm 50. I, I feel pretty good, actually. I'm pretty flexible. I've got kind of the... <laughs> All my bones are in the right place. I haven't... I got dexterity. From a... No, um, but... <laughs> I just always, you know... So I literally, at one point, I saw a friend of mine who's also a stand-up doing a show about how, like... Um, I'm 40, so I'm just, you know, you can't work out anymore. You can't work out when you're 40. And, I, and so I decided I was going to work out just to irritate him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been great. He's like a garage in my workout scheme. <laughs> so I think if, if I have a message for you folks tonight, and I think that I do, it's surround yourself with unfinished projects like Da Vinci did, and assholes will keep you. Wow. They feed your ego. <laughs> um, but here's okay. I, honestly, I, this is where I was going. I don't really have a. I. I this just occurred to me uh, uh, while I was trying to do it that I had all these clothes sitting around. This is such a dumb closer, but I don't care because it's there's no closers. We live in a. I, I might as well be in a cocoon. So um, I realized I have tennis shoes, but I don't play tennis. I run in them. But I wear running shoes when I walk. But I don't have walking shoes. But all shoes are walking shoes if you slow down enough. Um, and, and, I, and for the longest time, I, um, 
I, it, I don't know. It's like, I don't know when the transition had, but they used to be called sneakers for a long time. Shoes uh -huh. used to be called sneakers. How, <laughs> what kind of attitude do you have to have towards your fellow human beings that anybody who's not wearing clip clock leather shoes like they're in a mystery story, like a Hitchcock film from 1940. You know, ka tack ka tack ka tack That if you're wearing rubber sole shoes, those are sneakers. Most people cannot be trusted. <laughs> when I came in here, he was wearing sneakers. Before I realized that he was on top of me and we were at fisticuffs. He was wearing his fisticuffs. <laughs> So I, you know, I realize nobody like calls them sneakers anymore because everybody's sneaky. Um, I think that might be the reason. But I also realize some of my suits, I have suits, but I have no slacks. <laughs> right? I have suits, I'm not wearing dress pants unless I'm wearing a suit. And dress pants in and of itself sounds like a kilt. I like I have a kill. Okay. Oh and, and you're like, go commando. And I'm like, no, you don't deserve it. Uh, it's uh that's a that's on my only that's on my own deserve it. Fight. So yeah. We're not worthy. So, so yeah. But this is my kill. This is my kill, okay? This is, I have a kill. This is legit. This is what I would call dress pants. <laughs> this literally just occurred to me while I was standing here. And I bet you're wondering, how? why would you have a kilt within arm's reach? <laughs> because I'm Scottish. Um, but it's true. I've got Scottish blood that I discovered. So I started buying kilts everywhere. Yeah. But I, um, the reason I have... Uh, this in in arm's reach at any given time. Hello. <laughs> in, <laughs> when, I come in and do my, when I get up in the morning and I go do my lessons and I do my piano stuff, I, I'm often in my underpants. And <laughs> when the, the rest of the family wakes up, if I'm not done by the time they wake up, I can't just walk around in flagrante delecto. So I whip on my kilt and walk around in a skirt like a real man. And so. <laughs> I I feel I like I Ever. feel like kilt should be called dress pants. <laughs> That's my rule. And I don't have any slacks. But it's weird to me that it, back to the future again, but slackers were people who didn't wear suits. But they certainly weren't people who wear dress pants. Yeah. And the other word for slacks is trousers. And trousers to me is it sounds like an old English word for a drunk. <laughs> oh, let's hang out with him. He's a bit of a trouser. Who's that over there? That boy is, no, he's no good. Don't hire him. He's a trouser. We've seen him carousing and trousing all over town. Oh, no. Bad jeans in his trousers. Um, I wear... I wear jeans. I wear stretch jeans because, again, they, I have to be able to be active. The end of the world comes. I don't want to be like, I can't kick above my neck. <laughs> and it's the only weapon I have. Um, so, so I have, uh, so I wear stretch jeans at all times. So I can do the splits in case that's how, that's the money of the future. And <laughs> I got to sign off. We got two minutes left. I'm, oh. We're rolling it in. All right. This is, so. Um, so I wear, uh, I wear jeans. I don't wear chinos or dungarees. I don't know what that, chinos, first of all, that's a town outside of LA. I don't know why they got the name pants, but dungarees just sounds like something a dung farmer wears. It sounds like, it sounds like a leather apron covered in shit. Carly, you can't work in here. You forgot your dungaree. I'm sorry. Let me pull up my dungaree and get back to shoveling manure. Um, so I have no, I've gotten rid of any slacks, chinos, or dungarees that were loitering around my closet. I live only in jeans. I have suits, and that's it. And it's, and suits can cover a lot of things. You can have a business suit. You can have a space suit. And uh, shoot, you yeah. can have a lawsuit. 
And um, so I, I feel like that's a flexible enough word to cover almost anything. You know what I mean? You can have a lawsuit about the business suit you wear underneath your space suit or whether you have to or not. Business in space. Just saying. All right. I, I will leave you on this. I want to remind you during this, this time when everyone is worried about what our future is going to be like, I want to remind you, go look at footage from the 1920s um, or, or, right at, or footage from right after World War II, when people were in the streets and ticker tape parades and all that kind of stuff. And remember, all that stuff happened after the Spanish flu. And, and, there were, and we had none of the technology we have today. Life will come back to normal. And so what I would like to do is give you a, a reminder, something you can carry with you, along with the word actually, which you can use at your own discretion. Um, <laughs> Promise me you'll use your powers only for good. Um, but yes. also, also um, remember, farts aren't funny to deaf people. Thank you, Matt. It was great. Okay. Thank you so much. Peace. Thank, and thank, you. Well. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Take care of See you again soon. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow on my radio show. Bye. Bye. Yeah. 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 Make another round of applause for Hal, everybody. Yay, young woman. I am that good. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going, Noah. Fantastic. Uh, no, I'm, I, did, I did nothing. Hal's fantastic. <laughs> Love that guy. Awesome. Hilarious. Awesome. Um, thank you guys all uh, for tuning in to the show. Um, Hal do his awesome stuff. Uh, fantastic comedian. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, I am giving away um, some uh, prizes for the audience. I did a little bit of a raffle. And uh, my prizes, I have two tickets to um, our comedy intensive class at Flappers. So it's on July 11th. I've got two free tickets for that. This is a comedy writing class. If you've ever wanted to, you know, try to write stand up or to learn stand up, this class is perfect. <laughs> and my two winners of that prize are um, Ginger and Michelle Parker. Woo! Yay! Yay! All right, Ginger. <laughs> Still opening, so I need help. Thank you for joining us at the Flappers Comedy Club Virtual Comedy Show. We look forward to seeing you again. Please like and subscribe to our social media channels. We're on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find them all at Flappers Comedy. You can also find a complete show schedule and class schedule on our website at www.flapperscomedy.com. If you're in the Burbank area, we do offer takeout, so you can find our menu on our website. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Keep laughing. Okay, oddball Tracy. How do you do that? Congrats, Ginger. Bye, Hal. Bye, Hal. Bye, everybody. Bye. Come on. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to leave. Oh, my Lord. I'm leaving. <laughs>